he used to brag about like they can't catch me and you know they can't do this and he'll play and he don't get tackled. Sixth grade, I changed league and we ended up going eight no. I didn't get tackled the entire year. Went a championship game and a kid kind of grabs my jersey, he swings me down, and the whole crowd start screaming, just yelling because I got tackled. Everybody roared, everybody cheered. Um, he was mad. I'm like, eventually somebody was gonna tackle you. <laughs> it's just... I was all disappointed. My mom was like, why are you so upset? I'm like, because I got tackled today, mom. She was like, that's part of the game. I knew eventually he would get caught, but in his world now. Football is big in Ohio, and I think we make uh, tough, gritty football players, you know, like power football. They talk about football in Texas, but football in Ohio is about hard work, about tradition, it's about perseverance and adversity. I definitely take pride in where I'm from, I'm in the state of Ohio. All the way up until sixth grade, we stayed in, you know, a, a tough neighborhood, you know, it was kind of. Um, you know, rugged, you know, there's a lot of, you know, drug dealing and, you know, fights. The neighborhood that he grew up in uh, is known as uh, Uzi Alley. It, it was a house that um, was in a tough neighborhood, um, but it was hardworking people trying to make the best for their living. I always felt like my mom was real strict, um, but obviously now that I'm older, you know, I can see why she was doing that. She, she raised me and two of my younger brothers on her own, you know, so she's a strong-willed woman. He recognized that hard work in his mom and really transcended him to where, you know, he is today. It's really all like a, a, a close family because I live right next door to my parents. And then my um, oldest brother, Clarence, he didn't live far. You know, my son is a year older than Le'Veon, so they came up together. You know, we throw the ball in the yard. We might run some routes and learn how to take a handoff. He was always bigger than his age group. So he, he was definitely a big kid. He always played up. They got to see bigger kids and wasn't afraid. It took the fear out of him. I, de I definitely think it helped me develop as a football player. I mean, because, you know, when you actually do get to play with your age, it seems, it seems easier. People, even when he was little, they was like, your son's a beast, he's a monster. He's, and I'm like, oh, okay. You know, but I don't expect anyone to come to you and say your son sucks or your son is terrible. Seventh grade, we decided to move to Groveport. You know, my mom made a great move, you know, taking me out of the city. You know, even though she was struggling with like money, you know, she always found a way. I don't know if I would be where I am now if I didn't ever, if I stayed in that, you know, in that facility. First day of school, I get a call on the radio saying that, that there's a ruckus and I see the circle. I'm thinking, okay, someone's fighting in the middle. And here's Le'Veon and his boys, music on, and they're just dancing. You know, he called me straight in the office the first day. He's like, Le'Veon, I'm gonna be on you. Le'Veon and I, uh, our paths were almost parallel. Growing up in, a, in, a, in an environment where, you know, you, you, you wouldn't have a lot of things. My avenue was just like him playing sports. You know, sometimes I wouldn't even be in trouble. He just kind of called me in his office just to talk to me, you know, see how I was, see how my mom was or my two younger brothers and how life was just in general. He talked to him not just as the educator, but as a person that cared about whether he made it in life or not. Le'Veon's four years of Groveport was the best four-year run in, in over a decade. There was never a doubt well, as soon as he stepped on the field that he was going to play. And we had a really good team that year, and, but he was just one of those definites, you know that this kid is special. You, you, you expect people to say your, your kid is great, and I didn't know much about football anyway. But ninth grade year, I was like, okay, he, he, really, might, he really might be good. He always thought he was faster than, than he really was. He just made people miss. And so he's always calculating, that, okay, what's the best angle I can take for those guys not to be able to have a good hit on me. And that's his patience. We're playing week one his senior year. We need to score. They punt it, Le'Veon's returning the punt, and he catches the ball and he just stands there. And he doesn't move. And we are screaming, run, you, you run. And his, guy, his buddy comes down, makes a block, he goes up the sideline. 
plants his foot in the ground, cuts completely across the field in front of their entire team, walks in the end zone, flips the ball to, to the official. It's the best high school play I've, I've ever seen him make. Comes over, I said, how in the world did you do that? He goes, I don't know, I just saw it. Well, everybody likes the Ohio State Buckeyes in Columbus, and all kids dream of playing for them. And to think that it's reachable, I mean, it has to drive kids. Everybody wants to play for Ohio State. You know, I get three offers, Bowling Green first, then it was Marshall, then it was Eastern Michigan. But the whole time, you know, I'm thinking, you know, why is more schools not offering me? Like, you know, what am I doing wrong? We were playing Dublin Kaufman. Standing beside me uh, in, in the end zone was a high State recruiter. I was like, Coach, I said, uh, what do you think of him? He says, Don's balance with you. He says, they're lukewarm on him right now. It's tough being a kid when you look on rivals and you see guys that you, you think and you know that you're probably better than as a player and they're ranked higher than you. I think I literally looked at rivals every day. I would look at running backs and I would look at other players who's getting recruited, you know, highly getting LSU offers and Ohio State and, and I just kind of compare my game to those guys and I'd be like, you know, I'm doing the same thing he's doing or, you know, I can do this better and things like that. So, you know, people never gave me the respect that I felt like that I deserved. He was so consumed with the rivals rating and really what, what kind of got lost in it sometimes was what's the work I have to do to get there. Things came to him so easy that he just didn't feel like he had to work that hard. Which he didn't have to. I mean, he, just, he was just that good an athlete where it just came easy for him. Um, it was a lot of people when we were doing visits that didn't want him as a running back. They said he was big. And he was like, no, mommy, trust me when I tell you I'm a running back. They want him to change positions from running back to strong safety. You know, that's not what I wanted to do. That's not what I had a passion to do was play, you know, on the defense side of the ball. I wanted to show people that, you know, I could run with it. You know, I like having a chance to be able to change the game. Season went on, um, end of season came, uh, still had those three offers. I said, the film's out there. I said, you know, basketball season's starting up. I said, anything can happen. He had a basketball game against Pick Central. So I was watching the game, and uh, Le'Veon had a monster game. This, this recruiter happened to be watching another guy that, that had me playing basketball that they recruited for football. Following day, phone rings. It's Coach D'Antonio, Michigan State. They had some players that got in some trouble. Several of them happened to be running backs. I said, Coach D, to be honest with you, he can start for you right now. I really just one of the players who really got overlooked. And I'm lucky I ended up getting the Michigan State offer um, and going there and playing on a big stage so people can see what I'm able to do. He wants to prove a point. I'm the best running back. It's tough when you're a young kid and you're not getting the offers that you think you should get. It's tough looking on and, and daily being told that maybe you're not wanted. But I think it really kind of fueled him more than anything. For me, it just kind of created, you know, like a beast. Like, I'm so angry every time I play. I want to show, you know, the team that y'all had a chance to get me, and I'm going to show you what you missed out on. You know, so I always kept that type of motivation, you know, and I'm always going to keep that. You know what I mean? I, I don't see that going anywhere. I feel like the day I lose that is probably the day I hang up my cleats and be done playing football.